what's good y'all Elvis here back again with another episode of better barbering for my new people better barbers a series that I started where I share tips and tricks that make me a better barber that other people use to make them better barbers and ideally better people so barbering is a social business you're going to be dealing with people building relationships and when you build quality relationships you tend to build influence and with influence comes things like clout We've all heard the term clout chaser, and that most of that has a negative connotation. People that know me tend to, to know me for my catchphrase, crapped over clout, you know what I'm saying? I really identify with that because when it comes to my reasoning for doing anything, my craft takes priority to any clout or let's say outward perceptions of what I'm doing. I'm doing it for the love of my own craft, expressing the spark of creativity that God gave me over what so-and-so would think about it. And when you get good at your craft, it's gonna come with clout. But clout isn't necessarily a bad thing. It all depends on what your purposes are. I don't think doing anything for the sole purpose of clout is worth it. Because I think when the reasoning or the focus of why you do anything becomes someone else's perception, in a way you've kind of sold your soul, if not rented it for a short period of time. Doing it for your own fulfillment take, grows you and takes you places that doing it for other people never could. I say all that to say that ideally clout should not be your main focus, but Clout does have its purposes. Clout is a currency. Clout is attention. And a well-rounded barber, what I consider a better barber, knows how to use that clout to their benefit. Today, this video is basically about cashing in your clout. Generally, in the social media age, clout doesn't necessarily translate to money. It really depends on what the game you're playing is and what your plan of action is. You just garnering attention doesn't mean that that's gonna transition into money or even giving people value. Some people gain clout off of just being entertaining, not necessarily impacting anybody in a meaningful way. And entertainment is valuable. Comic relief keeps the world from getting too serious. Without entertainment, life is just work and then death. But there's a sweet spot between prioritizing your craft and the clout where you can utilize the best of both worlds. If you just focus on the craft and you completely neglect how to utilize clout for your benefit, then you're crippling your craft realistically. It's craft over clout, not craft instead of clout. Because without any kind of clout, you would have no attention, no motion outside of the people that specifically know about you and appreciate you right now. And that's a tiny pool compared to, if we're talking about barbers, your extended circle of clientele, your extended sphere of influence. There's a lot of barbers that prioritize cutting people with some clout, let's say celebrities, famous people. That's a good way to market yourself for some people, but it all depends on what your purpose is with that is. There's a lot of people that want to go to a barber or associate with people that are associated with famous people. But it's more important to understand if they value your craft and you specifically, if you're trying to incorporate them into your business. When you prioritize clout, it attracts customers. but clients are the people that appreciate your craft and the difference between clients and customers is customers are people that just want your good or service clients are people that you build a relationship that transcends the transaction somebody might come and get a cut by you because you cut their favorite nba player but they will stay a client because they connect and rock with you as an individual so clout is a good way to get on somebody's radar but it's not what's gonna keep people. There's many barbers that would give a celebrity a free cut just because they're famous, they can be able to take a picture with them. But the thing that most people don't realize is that celebrities are regular people, for better or for worse. A lot of celebrities are just the famous equivalent of the people that don't value their barbers and try to run off on haircuts. Allegedly, like YK Osiris, the only difference between some celebrities and the people you grew up with that don't value your service is that these celebrities feel like they can pay you in exposure. Now, let's say somebody's your favorite artist and you appreciate what they give to the world and you wanna show your appreciation with a free cut, that's, that's your prerogative, that's fine. But as far as a business move, most of the time that doesn't make sense, especially if you're not building a substantial connection with this person. Because as a barber, you get paid off your relationships. If you're prioritizing being a celebrity barber, quality relationships with celebrities is what you want to be able to do. And a celebrity is only going to connect you to other people in their network if you're a part of their network. Y'all have some level of a bond, some level of resonance. But other than, let's say, like I say, well-known celebrities, as a barber, be in the center of your own network, you will become some level of local celebrity in your own area. Of course, on varying scales. When I was a barber on campus at a and I had some level of local celebrity because 
everybody knew that I cut hair. Not everybody respected my, my craft, but I had clout with just being regularly known by a lot of people. Like sometimes I'd be in Walmart and somebody be like, oh wow, Elvis is here. Like nigga, this is Walmart. Everybody come to Walmart. But they only ever saw me either in class or cutting their hair. Like it was like, oh my gosh, he's, he's here doing regular people things. And I remember one time I was out with one of my friends and she was kind of mentioning like, oh yeah, like every time I bring you up in whatever group I'm in, most people know who you are. That's because I'm established in very specific communities, very specific ecosystems. When I was at a I studied chemical engineering. So I was plugged in with all the STEM majors for real, for real. Because we were like-minded people, they knew me and they liked me and then they, those were the people that recommended me to everybody else. And if you're the kind of person that's cool with your clients and y'all, let's say y'all are basically friend level, y'all friend level residents, when they have friends that need barber recommendations, you're gonna be the first person in their mind because you have built a certain amount of clout just off of the resonance that y'all have. So then the people that they recommend, you have a higher conversion rate of turning your, your clients' friends into your clients. The same thing doesn't apply to like somebody on the street. Somebody on the street might not know who the hell I am and they might hear I'm a barber and they might just want a haircut because I happen to be a barber, but they view me at the same level as every other barber that they've never heard of. They're just, oh, he's just a barber. Building clout is a crucial skill as a barber because clout, equates to influence. And just like all currencies are not equal, all different kinds of clout are not equal. The clout you would get just because somebody thinks you're situationally funny or whatever is very different than the clout you'd get when people think what you say is valuable. If what you say affects people in a positive way in the sense of the words you say influence people's lives for the better, it could help, let's say, help them with a problem. It's really at the heart of barbering. Like haircutting is problem solving when it comes to hair. And barbering is the, the relationship you build around the service. If you problem solve with somebody's hair adequately, they're gonna perceive some value with that. But then also if the relationship around the service is strong and valuable, then that just increases the clout you have with this specific client. And the beautiful thing about barbering is that somebody could be your client now and you could go, like the, if you built a quality relationship, you could go years without cutting their hair, but if they're in the city and they have the means and you're available and whatnot, they'll book with you again. And the powerful thing about social media that it is it's just online word of mouth. The same clients that I had at a and they're always recommending me to like-minded people that would need a quality haircut, but then outside of that, they're just like, oh, you would, you would really like him as a person. Those people turn into my clients a lot more frequent. And the same thing extends to social media. Let's say I make a post and my haircut's fire or whatever. The clout that I've built off of the goodwill and the good interaction and the residence I've had with these people makes them a lot more likely to share my posts or even to just interact with my posts. They might not even care about haircuts or getting a haircut by me, but they want to support me as a person. That's high quality clout. And that indirectly and sometimes directly turns into money. So learning how to cultivate high quality clout is like, I'd say a top tier, better barbering skill. Of course, building the craft takes priority because building the craft builds the clout. But it's also important to reinvest the clout into the craft to grow it even further. If you, and if you have enough high quality clout, you can direct that into other businesses, other avenues. A lot of the people that have cut their hair over time, they really enjoy my content. They originally came to me for me to solve whatever haircut problem. But because of the relationship, now they're invested into me. So like whatever I do in the future, a lot of times they're gonna want to support it in some kind of way, even if it's just engaging with a post, not necessarily, let's say, buying merch or sharing my stuff. But a lot of people that enjoy my content and then also share my content to other people are people that I've cut their hair in the past. And for whatever reason, now, I don't tend to do business with them, usually because they moved out somewhere and now it's a little more inconvenient or sometimes I'm just outside of their price range or our perception of value of my service isn't aligned anymore, but they still rock with me. It's not about the transaction. The connection transcends that. Something that I realized that really helped me build high quality clout is broadcasting my personality on social media. That could be, let's say, videos that I think are informative or funny or just have whatever value that resonates with me. 
and it connects to other people in a similar way. It could be a relatable video. I have this one video where I made a little anime reference and that got me so many clients. That put me on so many people's radar. Some people, it, as soon as I made that video, they're like, bro, I want to book with him. That's hilarious. But other people, they peeped that video maybe later in time and then they saw other videos where I'm talking about more philosophical things and they realized like, I rock with this dude Elvis way outside of the haircut, but they might be in town a few months, a few months later and they're like, you know what? Now it's convenient, I'm gonna get a haircut or now I've gotten into music. Some people, they like the haircuts but it doesn't make sense for them to get him anymore. But when they were with me, they realized, oh, we like a lot of the same things. We like a lot of the same music. People are always complimenting me on my playlist that I'd be playing in, the, in my little suite. So we have comparable tastes and they appreciate me putting them on with either a music or let's say ideas. We're each broadening each other's horizons. So that builds the influence that I have, which builds the high quality clout. But for anybody interested, I started doing consultations and I actually, actually created a Patreon where I'm gonna be putting up, let's say clips on my consultations and just general game or whatnot. Link should be in the description. If you want a consultation or some kind of coaching, that I have that available. Feel free to hit me on Instagram, DM me at Better Barbering. But that's all I got for today. I appreciate y'all watching. If you got any value from the video, please go ahead and like, subscribe. If you feel like this was valuable for you, just go ahead and share with somebody else you think that would find it valuable. But if you haven't already followed me on Instagram as well as TikTok, go ahead and follow your boy at Cuts by Elvis as well as at Better Barbering. But till next time, craft of a clout, I'm out.